So Home Depot has a very strong retail media network and in the last two weeks we hosted our first, we call it in front events, so it's like an upfront but for retail media networks. And we invited about 500 people from our suppliers or advertisers to media and um, media partners and then media press um, industry. So we all came together to learn more about um, how Home Depot is growing as a company, how we're leveraging our assets to build, um, to attract customers to our stores and to our website. So it was more than just about retail media, it was really about all of our marketing strategy, our creative strategy, our sports marketing strategy, and of course our retail media strategy. So let's talk about the Home Depot retail media mm -hmm. network and, and Orange and, and sort of the value it brings to the brands oh, and, sure. and also its broader effect in terms of how media is decided and, mm -hmm. you know, give us kind of an overview. So when I think of um, the difference between a retail media network and a media channel, there's one really big difference from a supplier or a CPG's perspective. They sell their product in our stores. So their obligation or their partnership to Home Depot is, is multifaceted. They have a merchandising relationship, a supply chain relationship. They bring us a lot of new invention and innovation to the products or to the category. And so they, now they also have a media relationship. And that's very different than having just a media channel relationship. So yes, we have advertisements that we sell, ad space that we sell, but we are also here to enrich the entire experience of the supplier within the Home Depot. Because remember, they, they've, they've picked us not just because of the media capabilities, but because of all the other investments that they've made as well into the Home Depot. It's a really a great place for them to pay off their investments across all touch points at the Home Depot. So how do brands mm -hmm. leverage the, the data that you collect to mm -hmm. help them with what they do? So at the Home Depot, our data is segmented into um, customers who are in projects and our contractors we call pros. And those customer, that customer data is really hard to find out in any marketplace unless you are the retailer. There could be anybody doing a, a kitchen right now. It doesn't matter their age, their demographic, where they live. They're just in a project. And that data is hard to source from general data providers. You have to know I can identify people in, the, in projects. So all of our data is segmented into projects. And that is really unique in what our suppliers want access to because they have products that help people complete their projects. Or they have products that help contractors or pros build their business, right? And so when you have access and insight into that kind of data at the scale that we have, it becomes a really unique offering and a really unique opportunity for our supplier. And they can get access to that through us. They can, we, we have a managed service team, so we either build all the campaigns like, a, like an agency would, and we build a plan for them, and we build all their media campaigns, both on our Home Depot properties, as well as in other media channels with our media partnerships, like with Google or Meta or Univision. And so we go and do full-scale media planning, and then we attach those audiences, and then we then to that media, and then we can see whether or not they are buying the products that our suppliers want to sell. So Melanie, uh, Home Depot has been at this since 2018. Yeah. A lot of lessons learned. A <laughs> lot of, uh, and now this whole sector has become quite hot and talked about here at Possible. Mm -hmm. What's exciting to you in terms of? Um, retail media, where it might go mm -hmm. as far as an industry, the implications it'll have in mm -hmm. advertising? Um, I think because of that supplier relationship and that it's multifaceted with a retailer, to me that means that retail media is in its infancy. It's not just a, a firecracker. It's not like something cool and then fades away. There's too much value between the supplier and the retailer for the retail media business to dwindle. And so I just think what's most exciting about it is there's so much more room to grow 
And because retail media networks did pop up a lot overnight, I think we've seen a lot of innovation and change in a very short period of time. But I think that that's just the beginning and there's a lot more opportunity for growth. Um, first off, we have to make it easier on these CPGs and suppliers to leverage retail media networks effectively, just like how we've had um, standardization around social or standard, standardization around search, like that all went through those phases. We will have something similar. Um, so what does that look like? How do we all work together to create that standardization? So I just think there's so much opportunity for growth. And with that comes a lot of opportunity for innovation, which I like.